So uh, today we finished up uh, the series for for Madoka. We watched ten through twelve. Yeah, yeah we, we did. did. God damn it. Sure did. Um. So, do we want to jump directly into summaries, or do you want me to talk about the opening a little bit first? Um. Or do we want to talk about mommy in a bath towel? Or mommy in a bath towel. <laughs> Mommy and about the uh we'll we'll talk about summaries first because everything else kind of predicates that okay um is built upon that um okay. so okay episode ten um you're welcome um episode ten uh or as I like to call it the beginning of the Homura arc uh <laughs> uh Homura we 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 cut to to Homura or as I colloquially colloquially called a homeraint uh because it doesn't quite look like homera she looks weird awkward uh nerdy most people um, call her moe mora but Gannon no well they're wrong it's homeraint um <laughs> <laughs> so she's a new transfer student at the school wow um and everyone still loves her though and they're like wow your hair's so great and she's like i don't feel so good and, Ma- and then Monica comes up to her and is like, hey, do you need to go to the nurse's office? Here, I'm the nurse's aide. I'll take you. And Homer's like, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, uh. And Monica's like, wow, you're really cool. Like, ca- uh, call me Monica, by the way. And, and Homer's, Homer's like, like, I what? love you. Uh, <laughs> what? And then Monica's like, can I call you Homer? And she's like, what? what? Can I call you lesbian? Um, uh, <laughs> And and blushes and is like, well, she's really cute. Um. Uh, is like, wow, okay. Um, Homura just starts crying about it all because you know she's really bad at math as well. Because we're back in class and Homura's having to answer a math puzzle or something on the whiteboard, and she's like, uh, 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 I can't do this. Um. We cut to everyone in school playing sports, and Homer is in under the the stands, under the bleachers, and and we hear, oh, she's she's not allowed to do sports, and because she's still sick and everything, and she's just like, oh, I'm so weak and pathetic and awful, and goes from there to her walking by herself on a bridge, and she's like, man, I'm worthless, I'm so weak, there's no point. I should just die. And you hear a soft voice whispering, being like, yeah, you should just die. Just just die. And she's like, yeah, I should just die. And then suddenly she's in a labyrinth uh, because she's been lured into one. And, oh no, she's about to die, but what? 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 M- mommy saves her with Monica. Wait, what? 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 And then Spooky started crying. Um, <laughs> uh, and then Cubay shows up and is like, hi, Homerain, uh, these are magical girls. You could be a magical girl too. Like, cool. It's like, yeah. Um, uh, and, and we, we cut to, to Mommy and, and Monica sort of talking about, yeah, we, we, uh, this is, this is sort of what we do. We're really cool. Um, everything's fine. It's like we make a net positive in the world because we're magical girls. We're symbols of hope. Um, then mommy's dead again. Cut to mommy <laughs> being dead again. Mm-hmm. Uh, we cut to while well, Perga's narc existing, and Monica's the only one who can solve the problem and kill him. And Homerant is there and is crying. He's like, "What? No, Monica, what are you doing?" And Monica dies fucking dies and Homerain is crying over her dead body and QB is like contract <laughs> and QB is like hey you can reset everything if you want like like hey we can we can we, what do you want to wish for Homerain like we can what do you want we could become a powerful magical girl and she's like I want to go back and be strong, and I want to protect Monica. I like she was strong and protected me. I want to be the one to protect her now. I don't want her to die. I want to go back to the first time I met her. And Kubey's like, "Okay, I'll grant it. Sure, hope this doesn't backfire." <laughs> um, 
so then that's when we learn that Homero's uh, sort of powers that she has involves uh, stopping time. She can she can do the time stop. She does that thing where she stops the time. It's so cool. It's it involves time. Uh, it, and she goes to Mami and Mariko and is like, like, well, okay, first of all, she goes to, to school and the whole, hey, I'm a new transfer student, but goes straight up to Mariko and is like, hey, Mariko, I'm a magical girl now. We can fight together. And Mariko's like, oh, what? Who are you? <laughs> and Homer's just like, kiss me, please. Marry me? <laughs> um, uh, and then we cut to her talking with Mami and, and Mariko and, like, showing off her power and, like, has a, a golf club and is like smacking this 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 can and mommy's like hmm your powers are time hmm hmm you, you, this this is interesting but you got to find a way to use it like you have to you have to be able to fight with it somehow um and so we cut to homura uh being at her house and uh we cut to her googling how to make a bomb <laughs> don't do <laughs> so that makes, at home <laughs> don't don't do that at home if, Don't do that uh, ever. You're in certain countries. You will actually be put on a list if you Google how to make a bomb. Um, uh, th- that is a real thing, and yeah. you don't want to be on those lists. Nope. Uh, so we, we we cut to like a montage of the three of them like fighting together and and killing uh, the witch. Uh, dead, dead, dead. Good team. And like as we progress, like Homura like has more and more feelings for Monica and like connects with her more, and like the two of them like bond. And then we we. Cut back to, you know, the end again. Well, Pergus knock. It happens. Monica dies again. Well, she doesn't this time. She doesn't actually die. What happens is she turns into the ultimate witch. Because as Kyube kind of explains in a bit, like, hey, like, if Monica defeats it, like, there's no other reason for Monica to be around. So she's, like, fulfilled her purpose. Now she can become a witch. But we'll get to that. Uh, we cut back to everyone in the group. Kyoko's there, and Sayaka's there now too, and and uh, Sayaka's like, God, can, can you fight with anything but a bomb, please? I nearly got hit by one of them. And Homura's like, okay, I'll think of something. And then we cut to Homura stopping time and stealing weapons from the Yakuza. Um, <laughs> just, you know, going to their headquarters, stealing their guns from lockers and shit, and just taking them. And I fucking love the scene so much. It's so good. Um, we cut back and Sayaka still dies the same way and not just does she die the same way and become the witch the same way, but uh, uh, Kyoko and Madoka are trying the exact same thing that they did in the series that we've watched so far, where they're trying to bring her back and Kyoko's fighting and Madoka's trying to call to her, but you know, Madoka's a magical girl now, so she's def- able to defend herself against it. Um, but, you know, Mad- it still doesn't work. And, uh, Homura saves the day and kills, uh, Sayaka's witch. And then, as soon as she does, Mami holds up Homura and then kills Kyoko. And we're like, what? And Mami's like, hey, we've just learnt the truth that all magical girls turn into witches. Like, what is the... P- we should not be alive. Like, yep. if this is our destiny... We, we, we've got to die. Like, this is, like, there's no point, like, we're awful. Like, this is awful. Like, this is, like, death is, like, an embrace, a, a, a perfect fate that we deserve and should crave instead of becoming a witch. Uh, and Mami's about to kill Homura, but Madoka kills Mami and saves Homura. And they have an incredibly gay moment of crying together about the whole thing. Um... But the two of them, once again, go to Walpurgis Nach, and Madoka saves Homura, and Homura saves Madoka, and this time the both of them are laying there, and they're like, do you have any grease seeds left to, to save us? And M- Madoka's like, nope. And Homura's like, well, at least we can die here together, and, like, at least I was I was able to try. Like a like at least like at least <laughs> at least you you're not becoming a a, a witch this time, but Madoka's like psych. I actually had a grief seed and yeah. I'm gonna save you, Homura. Hey, Homura, please go back again in time and stop me from becoming a magical girl. Like, please, I don't I I don't want this. I don't want to have ever been a magical girl. Like, please stop me. Um, prevent Kyube from signing me up. And they have a really cute gay moment. It's incredibly gay. 
and then Homura goes back and basically has her her moment Wait. of <laughs> Hold on, we need to pause for a second. You just said an incredibly cute gay moment. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say that. you that's... also said wait, hold on, yeah. hold on. We need to we need to revisit this really quick. <laughs> yeah. First uh, off, the incredibly Homura cute says, Homura says they they should become witches together and literally destroy the world. <laughs> and yes. then Is that says, not an incredibly cute gay moment? <laughs> no, and then Madoka says, "Hey Homura, I have one last thing to ask. Will you kill me?" <laughs> It's incredibly that cute and gay. Murder yeah. her. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> uh, also, very very quick side note. Uh, the soul gem that Madoka's like, I had one left. Uh, it's Sayaka's soul gem. Or Sayaka's grief seed, sorry. The grief yeah, seed yeah. left. Uh, it's Sayaka's. I did forget to mention that. <sighs> yeah, she kept Sayaka's this whole it. time. Yep. Yeah. Um. Anyway, we cut to Homura going back one more time. And Homura's like, okay, this is it. I I have to do this. I have to succeed. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna really prepare. So we cut to Homura like stealing weapons from the military and being like, I'm going to fight every witch by myself. I will not let Madoka become a magical girl. I'm going to prevent this from happening. So I'm gonna do this all myself. Um uh, and it's like, well, okay. Homura is dedicated completely yeah. to Madoka. And they, um, so they only show like a handful of the loops. Uh, mm. It's canon that Homura it's, has done this around a hundred times, equaling about twelve years. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's very evident months. that like this yeah. is this is not like all the loops that we've seen. It's very clear that like yeah. this has this has become entirely Homura's life. Yeah, Homura's so we see... life has just been this for a long time. Yeah, so mm-hmm. we see the first loop, we see a few in-between loops, and then we see the one that's directly before the series starts with the intro to the yeah. first episode. Yeah. Yeah, 12 and so full it's years. Like... <laughs> yeah, it's 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 quite a quite a fucking number. Um huh. and then hey, wait a minute. I remember this scene. It's the scene from the very beginning of episode one. Except, hang on, it's kind of a little bit different now. Because, hey, we can actually hear what, like, Homura's saying now. And Homura is, like, failing this fight, but is desperately screaming out to Madoka to, like, don't believe his lies. Like, don't do it, Madoka. Don't become a magical girl. Like, just don't do this. Mm. Um... But, as in the first bit of the episode, we sort of see, see Monica go to make a decision, and it turns out she does make the decision. She does become a magical girl. And then Homura lays there, sort of feeling that it's all futile, um, and, and, and feeling like she still failed yet again. Um, and then Kyubei... Uh, uh, <laughs> Kyubei, this is when Kyubei reveals to Homura, like, hey, like, you tried, like, I don't know why you tried, but like, hey, like, this was, this is basically Madoka's destiny, like, she, she's gotta, like, she's gotta do this, and like, after, after killing uh, her, essentially, her, her, her destiny, her mortal enemy of, uh, Walpurgis uh, there's nothing left for, uh, Madoka to really overcome, nothing for her to challenge, so her existing after that is essentially moot. There's no reason for Madoka to exist after that. So that's that's why Madoka turns and always will become a witch and always will die. Um, and Homura is like, no, fuck you. We're looping again. We mic ride. We go into one more loop. And now we see the glimpses of the series from Homura's eyes. We see her chasing down as many Cubes as she can, killing them. We see her chasing the one that, that Madoka eventually finds. And that's it. And then now we're caught up on Homer the story uh, throughout uh, the series. And that's the end of episode 11. Ten. And then also it's like, oh, okay, the outro song makes a lot more sense now because it's quite literally Homer singing about Madoka. Like, I love it. Pretty fucking gay, and this is this is this was the moment when I when I sort of went Tasty. to 
Deer and Spooky and was like, I'm kind of disappointed, not in the show, but in the way people talk about it, because this is so explicitly a a a a, a very foundational, like lesbian love story between Homura and Madoka, as well as, you know, others within there, but like it's like the entire core premise of the show is basically built around Homura and Madoka because of that relationship that they have. Um, and it's like, I have every, all the glimpses that I've seen people talking about this show over time, I have never seen an inkling of, oh yeah, it's really gay, by the way. Mm-hmm. It's always just been like, like shit about Kyubei, which like you watch the first episode and it's like, okay, yeah, I get it. Kyubei's clearly up to something like that's, there's, there's something going on there. But it's like, I I was so disappointed because it's like this like people should be like screaming this from the rooftops constantly about how explicitly gay this is. It's no, they're so best good. friends. They're best friends. Uh, yeah, they're uh, best friends. Best yeah. friends. <sighs> it is it my turn? Best. best. Yes. Best. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so we cut back to when QB learned that Homer is a time traveler and what's been going on. She's apparently the reason Madoka is so powerful, though, because she's been changing destiny and every single timeline makes Madoka the main point of interest. So, haha, I'm Another, right. like, it's all your fault. Reinforcing the gay. <laughs> <laughs> you made literally everything to be about Madoka, haha, you fucked it up. Meanwhile, at Sayaka's funeral, uh, no one has any leads on it and Madoka is sad. And then she vents her anger towards QB and she's like, what the fuck? And he's like, do you feel anger or sadness towards livestock? Wow. And she's like, no, these are horrible. It's like, don't say that. Why do you eat meat? Bitch, go vegan. At least we treat you better than cows. And then he shows her all of history's magical girls ever. And without them, life pretty much would not have been developed and they would have still lived in caves. So bitch, don't cry. Still would have been Naked in caves. What's yes. wrong with that, QB? QB was shocked yeah. that that there's a world where everyone has emotions individually. They were like, wow, that's weird. Let's deal with it. This sounds cool. And then teacher is actually finally having a real ass drink and is sad about her <gasps> students. She's drinking with Madoka's mom who's struggling with their daughters. Thoughts about that. Mm. Madoka. Because when Monica came home from the... the- funeral her mom was like hey like do you want to talk about it and Marco's like no and her mom's like I feel yeah, like she's you know like do you know this? anything and Monica's like, like I don't know anything why would you think I would know anything about Sayaka's death she's just my best friend <laughs> yeah so her mom's like I'm really concerned do you know anything alcoholic teacher <laughs> An alcoholic teacher is like, I know that uh, if you cook eggs the wrong way, your boyfriend will leave you. And Junko's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Madoka goes to talk to Hamura and she's like, what's full Purgus knocked? Are you, are you prepping for it? She's like, it's a witch that doesn't need a labyrinth. It's really strong. And now that Kyoko's dead, I'm the only one left. And Madoka's like, should I be a magical girl? And just, shut up! No! No! Madoka, no! No! <laughs> and then Madoka cries a lot. And then Hamura is also struggling with how she's feeling as well, and hugs Madoka, and she's like, I know this is creepy. Like, I get it. Like, you don't understand what's going on. And then she mentions, I'm kind of from the future past timeline thing, and I've watched you die thousands of times, and you were literally everything for me. And it's, I've known you for years, and it's gotten to a point that we can't even connect anymore because we're drifting farther and farther apart. Anyway, meanwhile, the city's having an evacuation because of a horrible storm, supposedly, that's coming towards them. Madoka's family's even evac, so everybody's safe. Uh, ha- Hamura goes to fight the witch, and she's here. Walpurgis is fucking here. Hamura changes over and has ten bazillion bazookas. That she stops time and fires all of them at him. And RPGs and buildings blowing up and gas-filled tanker cars thrown straight at it. Submarine guns, bombs. It's let's go lesbian time. Uh, but it's still... Lesbian. But it is still alive. And Madoka goes to the bathroom for a minute to think about life and talk to QB. 
And she's like, if it goes bad, she'll just retry the timeline at this point. It's an endless cycle. If she gives up, she's just going to turn into a grief seed because that was her wish. So she could never stop hoping. She's like, okay, I got to go stop this. So Madoka goes to leave and her mom's like, uh, where's you, where are you going? And then we have a really emotional mother-daughter moment where we find out that she's actually hot. No. <laughs> where <laughs> oh my god yeah. she was humming her the whole time oh, wow oh. nice and... spooky told us about that theory and we made many a good joke about it yeah. about how dumb it is <laughs> uh she's like i'd be sad if i lost my daughter Ugh. and she's like but because i love you i have to go and mom is like well all right i'll go with you and she's like nah and mom's like all right sure bye you're just a child goodbye Walpurgis yeah. is heading further into the city and is going to run into a shelter at some point. So Hammer really needs to stop him. But then Hammer's leg is trapped under rubble and so she's feeling sad and like giving up and her her gym is getting all griefy because she doesn't want to just go back in time because it just ruined Madoka's life more. <laughs> but then well, it's Mad- not just ruining Madoka's life, it's also the, 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 the sort of selfish desire of hers of like... She, like she said earlier, of like every time I go back, we drift further apart. It's yeah. like, and it's it, every I, every time I go back, I yeah. have another chance to save you. But the you that you are, when like when I eventually save you, you're less and less the person that I knew. That and every time she goes back, Madoka becomes more of a point of interest for Kyubei mm. because she becomes more yeah. has more potential as a magical girl every single now time. Now that she's learned like the yeah. futility Madoka, of it all. Madoka in the first timeline is one of the weaker magical girls. In in the first timeline, M- Mami is canonically the strongest one out of all of them. But by the end of it, um, Madoka has become the strongest because of Homura. So... Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Homura. And Homura says, "If I can't save Madoka, then my life is pointless, and I'll just become a witch." <laughs> yep. She. Yeah. She. Cause she. Cause like uh, Kube kind of like everything. Like again, kind of accidentally, but also like fulfilling the the inevitability of a witch turning of a of witch being turned uh, by a, a magical girl into a witch. The sort of like. Homura finally realizes the futility of it all, of, like, no matter how many times she goes back in time and tries to do it, it will always, she will always fail. And it's like, even if she does succeed, it's, it's like, what she, what, what she has to sacrifice to get that is just impossible. And so it's like, she's, she realizes that she's lost herself to this loop completely. And it's like, there's no purpose in me going back in time anymore, because I'll just fail yeah. every time. I'll just make Madoka it's have more potential pain. as a magical girl, and yeah. I'll just fuck shit up even more, so... But yeah. then... So... Last minute, end of episode 11... Uh-huh. Madoka is there, and she takes her hand, and she's gonna do something about everything, and she's like, I'm gonna make a contract. Whoa! And that yeah. was the episode. I'm sorry, Homura. I'm gonna become a magical girl. <laughs> and oh, Homura's like, just... God damn it! <laughs> the, 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 like, the way it's acted as well yeah. of, of Madoka just being like, I'm, like, not just going, I'm sorry, I'm gonna become a magical girl, but, like, holding Homura and being like, I'm so sorry. Because she's like, I, 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 like, Madoka realizes what Homura has sacrificed for her yes. and is like, Madoka being the person who doesn't want to, uh, doesn't want others to feel pain for her and wants to take on other people's pain, seeing that someone has done all that for her, she just, it's, it's like, I, I need to fix this. Madoka, Madoka always takes on the burden of everybody else, so somebody taking the burden for her is hard. Yeah. Yeah, so, episode 12. Uh, uh, episode 12. This is when everything becomes both more literal and more abstract at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, remember when Madoka said she was going to become a magical girl and said sorry to uh, Homura? Well, yeah, we're continuing right from there. Um, she's saying, I'm going to I'm gonna do it. And Kyubei's like, what's your wish? And she's like, I, I am the person I am now because... 
you have been protecting me for so long, Homura. Like, there is no way I could be the person I am now without you. Like, you you found me. You you have protected me. I won't waste this opportunity you've given me. I'm... I'm I... I... I I will do what I can and and fix everything. Um, Kubei essentially reminds us once again that, hey, uh, Marika, you right now, at the current point in time, and in the, the sort of structural point of the loop, are at the centre of everything. Because of the loops, you're at the centre of all these timelines. And because we're nearing the end of the loop, and near the, the knowledge of, of Homura and everything and the loops... It's all converging into you right now, Marika. All the timelines are converging into you, which is why you're so powerful. You could wish for anything, and the cosmic balance of the universe would probably actually give it to you. Like, there's no limit for you, Marika. And so Marika's like, okay then, Kube, fuck you! <laughs> I essentially wish to free the magical girls from this... The magical yeah. girls slash witches from this pain and this constant yeah, she, loop of grief. She wishes that all witches, past, present, and future, and future. have never existed and will never exist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, which, Cubay's like, wait, no, hang on, not that. That's not good. Um, He's like, that's gonna, like, change the universe? Oh, fuck, I probably should have, like, thought that she would do something like this. Um, Madoka is essentially wanting to free people from this, not just the eternal loop of, um, uh, Homura going back in time to save Madoka, but the loop itself yeah. of Magical Girl to yeah. energy battery to witch to be killed by a Magical Girl who will then become a witch, who will then be killed by a Magical Girl, who will then be over and over and over again just yeah. to create energy for Cubase people. To put it to um, put it like really simply, Madoka is becoming hope itself and she doesn't want uh, people's wishes to turn into bad things because of despair, so she's literally dying for their sins. Yes, Madoka is Yay. quite literally becoming Madoka Jesus. Madoka is magical um, girl Jesus. <laughs> and, yes. and I... For, like, probably the one person out there who is probably hearing me praise them for, like, kind of making Madoka a Jesus, and then realizing my thoughts on, like, what other series do with making yeah. characters Jesus, uh, this series deserves it, and yeah. actually make, like, it, it doesn't just be like, I'm Jesus now, it I has to be done everything. Well. <laughs> it has to be done well, and there has to be, like, they have to really understand what they're doing, and they're yes. doing this, because we go, we we have a a a sort of montage of Monica being told by QB essentially, like, hey, you're, you're, like, going to change the universe, Monica, you're, like, you're just going to be a concept. Like, this is this is all you're going to be. And we cut to Madoka sitting with Mami and Kyoko. Um, and Mami kind of puts it a little bit more plainly, saying, Madoka, it would have been better for you to just die. Because, yeah. like, what, you've, what you're doing is... A constant fight more... forever. You're going to be, yeah, fighting forever. It is pain. It is just... Like, the loop is going to be broken, but yeah. something has to take its place, and something has to take that burden. And Madoka um, says, and that's what I wanted. <laughs> uh, yep, and Madoka's so like, good. yes, that I want that. Um, and Mommy's like, well, then I better give you this. And Mommy gives Madoka back her notebook filled with her little uh, magical girl designs of her outfit, uh, which is adorable. Um and sort of reinforces that uh, you you won't be remembered. You're literally becoming hope yeah. itself. Yeah, and also um, I love that because so and it doesn't. I guess it doesn't show you it that much. But mommy is always when all of, when all of them are alive. Mommy is always the leader of the group. Yeah. So it's like the leader mommy, giving yeah. Madoka like, here you go. You're the leader now yeah. kind of thing too. Just kind of a little double meaning thing that's really nice. Yeah, kind of like a a, a, a passing of the torch and yeah. like acknowledging that like, hey, I might be the leader of the group, but you were like the soul of it. Yeah. Like you you were like the the true driving force of 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 everything with 
to do with this. Like, thank you, and also, like, I'm so sorry at the same time. Like, yeah. I, I, be at peace, essentially, as much as you can. Um, so we cut back, and Madoka is finally a magical girl. Um, and she pulls out her staff, which turns into a bow, a really cool bow, uh, and she absolutely destroys Walpurgis Nacht, and we get a very beautiful visual scene of, um, Madoka essentially saying, like, be free now, like, like, this is it, like, it's, everything's going to change, uh, and Kyubei and Homura are kind of just standing there at the, at the epicenter of this massive cosmic shift. Uh, Kyubei being like, I kind of know what's going to happen. And Homura being like, what is Madoka doing? No, like, don't do this. Like, this is, like, what are you doing? Um, uh, Kyubei basically says to Homura, like, hey, um, we're laying here in essentially this universe and uh what 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 do you think kind what what kind of end of existence is in store for this like what is it now like think that everything the universe is changing according to Madoka's new rules that she yeah. has written she has become a god in the most literal sense she is because of all this power she is able to completely change the universe yeah, to her whim. Yeah, and then he's like, and she'll become the baddest witch of them all. Yeah. He, he's, he's like, he, he goes from one breath saying like, oh, she, she was so powerful, she was able to birth a new universe. It seems fitting that she's like, what's left, like taking on all of the burdens of all of the magical girls and all of the witches, all of that grief having to take it on has also turned her into the most destructive power enough to destroy a universe now. Um, and it's like, it, that's what her soul gem, like, the soul gem has become. Um, like, and Homura watches as this, this, this giant cataclysmic cosmic force so envelops the earth and conscripts it and and not conscripts uh but uh starts wrapping around it and affecting it and and drowning it and causing so much pain and homer is like what is no what is going on and then madik is like bitch i'm a lesbian i'm stronger <laughs> than this and just goes like fuck your rules cube only rule that matters is my rule now yep. and absolutely kills that cataclysmic force with her bow in a brand new magical girl outfit because she's such a lesbian she even changed before she came to do it again because <laughs> she's like i can't do this in the same hair outfit now. <laughs> yeah she has long hair now long flowing hair um and giant and... wings and a long white <laughs> dress oh <laughs> uh, it is very cinematic in a people way people say um, that this has <laughs> The religion oh, has no. no influence on this series at all, by the way. I want to say. Uh -huh. What? People say I that don't... all the time. <laughs> They're probably the same people that think that Homura and Madoka aren't lesbians. Yeah, it's too. actually amazing. I'll, like, mention biblical <sighs> themes in Madoka, and people are like, that's not true. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> what? what? Huh? <laughs> but <laughs> Anyway. So, the the explosive force of this cataclysmic uh, disaster exploding and dying uh, envelops Homura, um, and this is when we get probably one of the most abstract bits of the entire series, in my mind, of um, an, a, a, an explanation, a little bit further an explanation of what will become of Madoka, um, we hear a voiceover saying that Madoka has ceased to both begin and end. She has ceased completely. Uh, she shifted into a higher plane of existence and has become merely a concept in this new universe. Uh, memories of her, like her, will cease to exist. Um, she will purely just be a, a, a concept, concept, like yeah. a 
a sort of uh, back like a, a sort of background effect in this universe now because it is in her image essentially um and then we hear Homura listening in on this and disagreeing and saying no Monica what you, what do you Kyuubei, Monica doesn't deserve this reward. Like, she's saved everyone, and this is what she gets for it. It's not fair. It's a fate worse it's, than she death. <laughs> it's a fate worse than death. And Monica comes and comforts her and tells her, it's okay. Like, it's it, it's not. Like, yeah, they, have, I they want are this. naked floating in space hugging each other. <laughs> naked yeah. floating in space hugging each other in a sort of cosmic soup of abstract um and homura essentially saying like like you're going to cease to exist like like everyone f- will forget you i'll forget you and i i don't want that um and marika holds her and says i like it's not going to be like that i can see everything i can see every every when like i see all the universes now like all the timelines i've seen what you've done for me fully like i can remember it all and i see it all and see it through my eyes and your eyes and i am so sorry that you had to do that for me and it's like to, she then says uh one of the gayest things ever to just say like to think i had such a precious friend with me this entire time thank you homura and is just, like, Homura is just, like, bawling her eyes out, completely, like, refusing to accept it, trying to s- scramble to, like, hold on to Madoka, and Madoka is just like, I am so sorry, I hope, I hope, like, what I've done can, like, help you be at peace as well, like, I want to help you be at peace, so, like, I'll be fine, like, everything with me is fine, I'd like, thank you so much, you don't have to do this anymore, like, you're, you're free, Homura. Um, and Homura's like, but you have nowhere to go back to, you'll be trapped here, like, you'll be stuck in this sort of existence, like, I won't be able to see you anymore, no one will be able to see you anymore, you won't exist, and that's when she just says, yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm not trapped, I'm, I'm not stuck, I'm, I'm, I, I, I will be here. I, like, I still exist in not the same sort of capacity, but I will be everywhere, I will be everywhere, I'll be there, like, you can remember me. Um, Homura is like, I don't want to forget you, and Madoka's like, don't give up, I mean, you managed to somehow follow me up to this point, which, yeah, like, every, like, everything that, like, has just happened, sort of, the, the the concept of Madoka essentially becoming a god, the the point of it and the sort of exercise of it, theoretically no one should be able to join her and, like, hold on to her as she goes through this journey. Essentially, like, it's the equivalent of holding on to Superman's shoe while he's flying around Earth at, like, top speed. Like, you're gonna fall off um, unless you're really dedicated to holding on to that person. Um, it, which Homura is yeah. and has been basically her entire life now. Um, and she's like, you managed to hold on and follow me here, so you won't forget me. And she unties her hair ribbon and hands it to Homura and says, listen, if anyone can do it, you can. And magical girls are hope. Like, miracles can really happen. Like, th- it, this is the truth. Like, remember that. Remember we are hope. Like there is hope in the in in the universe in the world, and it doesn't. The cycle no longer has to exist. It no longer has to be grief. You don't have to fall to grief. It is all fine. I am shouldering it all. Uh, it will all be changed now. Um, and Homura is broken by this. Madoka says goodbye, um, and. Then they separate, and Madoka uh, disappears and says her final goodbyes to Homura, and Homura essentially falls back to this new universe and 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 goes into this new universe to be reborn, essentially. Um, and then we cut to... Hey, remember that guy in the hospital with the... the, the... <laughs> 
Kyosuke, everyone's favorite character. Everyone's favorite character. Uh, he is at a a um. Not a rehearsal. What's the um recital. an interview? A recital. A recital. Oh interview. wait, yeah, it's like it's, an interview. The first thing's like it's, an interview. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like an interview that he's at. Sort of a uh 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 sort of a review. The sort of thing where you know it's it's like a portfolio review essentially, but for musicians. Uh, and he's he's playing uh, a a piece, a little bit on the nose piece. But you know, I feel like that character is entirely nothing but being on the nose. Um. <laughs> You mean the same piece he's, uh, he's played this entire fucking show? Yeah, Ave Maria. Um, and we hear Madoka saying, uh, the future has to disappear too, um, with this new universe. Like, with the new universe, the future of the old universe has to disappear. Um, it probably isn't what you wanted, Sayaka, so I thought I'd show you that everything you did, everything you did it for, every your wish... Everything you fought for, for him, like, it wasn't meaningless. Um, he, your boy did well in the end, and he will have a long, fulfilling life, essentially achieving his dream, thanks to you. Um, and we cut to the back of the auditorium, em- basically empty auditorium, to see Madoka and Sayaka as, essentially, ghosts, mm-hmm. um, watching this, and, and Sayaka is just sort of sitting there, motionless, sort of just in the moment, happy um and she she says all i wanted was to hear him one more time and for others to be able to hear him again um just remembering that is enough for me um i have no regrets anymore which is a nice call back to her the yeah. way she sort of said that when uh, he first came out of hospital and sort of when she became a magical girl and was like i'm not going to regret this and sort of being like i have no regrets i'm at peace and it's like now it's actually true. Yeah. Um, Which also she works has grown. in the uh, theming of the Little Mermaid folktale that she's yes. based on. Because at the end of that, she falls off of the ship expecting to turn into sea foam, but is instead turned into like an ethereal being. So it like yes. makes total fucking sense uh, with yeah. that too. Especially, yeah, because I remember you uh, outside the podcast and everything bringing that up to me, bringing up like, oh yeah, Sayaka's like, entire character yeah, and it's like arc loosely, is basically themed off yeah it's like loosely themed off, off with some degree to of the original little mermaid story and i was like huh that makes a lot of sense yeah and um, it makes even more which, sense with that ending it, yeah it makes more sense with that ending which i yeah i i i was very pleasantly surprised to hear that um which again ties into the whole sort of like german folk tale uh, yeah. end of the series yeah um but yeah anyway we'll keep going uh she says she has no regrets anymore and says there's just one last thing i want to know and uh, we sort of see hitomi uh, off to the sides on the stage looking out at the boy um sort of longingly and she just says she, like uh he doesn't deserve someone as good as her um, oh, he does. I forget exactly what she yeah, says. She's like, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't really matter. He, they'll she's, be great together because yeah. she ends it saying like Hitomi will be great. Yeah, with with him, like they they will be great together. And then she cries, and Madoka's just like let's let's get going, and they disappear, and suddenly the auditorium changes to be uh, f- a a larger, filled with people. Uh, more formal performance and we cut back to the to the to the performer and he's now in a full suit and he finishes performing looks up sees the crowd and is a little bit shocked almost as if the transition from empty to full happened for him as well um it didn't but like right. that sort of like transition of him sort of realizing like what he's accomplished what he's what he's what he's become and he sort of gets an inkling and we we see it sort of going through his mind of like Sayaka, like yep, Sayaka, and then we cut to uh this brand new universe that we see um because that was all happening in this new universe because Sayaka is still dead um yeah well she yeah died. yeah. 
Yeah, she... Well, she's not still dead, but she dies in the same way. Yeah. Um, in a similar way, I guess, because things are different no, same, now in a different way. same exact way, except for now, instead of becoming a witch, Madoka took her soul. Okay, okay. Yeah. So it is the same way. Yeah. Okay, cool. That is good. Uh, well, it's not good, because she's dead, but, you know... Um, but it's fine, because now we she cut has salvation... To... Yeah, and also now Mommy's still alive because hey, yeah, Mommy Mommy's, is alive <laughs> Mommy's alive Mommy again. Mommy's alive again. Mommy and Kyoko and... live, <laughs> which I'll explain and... that in a second for people who are confused. Yeah, we 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 cut to them sort of explaining that like they just got out of the fight with uh to uh, that Sayaka perished in, and we're like Sayaka used up all her power and 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 lost essentially. We we lost her. Um. And this is when we learn that magical girls still eventually vanish from the world. The remnants of the cycle or something that has replaced it exist. Um, we cut to Homura standing there holding Madoka's ribbon um, and just saying Madoka and getting incredibly emotional. And Kyoko and, and Mami turn to her and be like, what? Who? What? <laughs> Who? Who? Who's that? And Homura's just like, I, I, I don't, I don't know really. Like Homura is 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 struggling to remember because she's she her connection to Madoka is so strong, and she's trying to desperately pull through with it and and grip Madoka and pull her back into her mind into this new universe and remember her, but she can't quite get there. Um. And it's quite touching, because then we cut to uh, Madoka's little brother, who is sort of drawing something in the in 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 the dirt, and we see it's Madoka he's drawing in the dirt. And Homura comes up to him and sits next to him, and he just starts saying Madoka, 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 and she's like, "Huh, Ma- <laughs> who's that? Is that looks my just like her. <laughs> looks just like her. yeah, just looks just like her." Um, uh, and then uh, Madoka's father comes along and, and grabs her brother and is like, come on, d- d- don't talk to strangers, what the fuck? What did I fucking tell you, stupid kid? What are you, like, fucking two or something, you dumbass? Um, <laughs> and <laughs> Homura has a, a conversation with Madoka's mother, and um, uh, which, you know, is fitting, considering they're both Homura. Oh my um, god, <laughs> that fucking <laughs> theory. And and Madoka's mother is like Madoka. It's it's odd for him to have such like a vivid imaginary friend, uh, like the, such a strong sort of vision that he does. Um, like I wonder like who it's based on. Um, and they they have a very touching moment of uh, of um, Madoka's mother looking at Homero and being like, "Wow, you your your ribbon is very beautiful. Like you." But it's not yellow. Yeah, too bad it's not yellow. Um, it's 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 very pretty. It, it it you look beautiful with it, and it's like I I would have like, like it's it's the sort of something I would have liked. Um, I I would like. Um, and Homura just goes, uh, have it. Um, would you like it? And Madoka's mother is like, no, no, I'm I'm much too old for that. Which I feel was perfect enough for that conversation because it, it very very perfectly sort of encapsulates like Homura cares so much about Monica and it still it still is attached to her that she's like accepted Monica's sort of ethos and and sort of morals because she's willing to unconsciously give up her one physical connection to Monica to someone that she realized probably needs it mm-hmm. more than her um, which Homura in before all of this probably wouldn't have actually done. She would have probably kept it as like, no, I can't give this up. Like, this is my only connection to Madoka. Like, I need this in order to save her again. Um, but it's like an unconscious, like, Homura has grown to, like, accept this new universe and the way, like, what Madoka has sacrificed. And also... It, it, like I like the, the her mother Madoka's mother is sort of being like I like that I would have I would have uh, liked to have had like bought that or worn it, uh, which it ties into Madoka's relationship with her mother sort of being like her mother really did care about her and yeah. loved her and 
like, wanted to give her everything that she had or didn't have. Um, which I felt the conversation could have ended there and been absolutely perfect. They go a little bit further, which it, a little bit annoying to me, but, like, not detrimental at all because Madoka's mother's just like if I had a daughter though I would get it I, I would take it for her which like I felt they didn't need to say but I also understand that like it, it also helps really reinforce the idea for for some people um so it's like that was an incredibly touching scene for the both of them for a character that in a lesser anime would not have been given this much depth yeah. like especially with the whole stopping Madoka in the previous, like, episode, with, like, the way she, like, Madoka goes off to save Homura, and Madoka's mother, like, grabs her and stops her, and is like, what are you doing going out in this, like, natural disaster? And Madoka's like, I need to go save my friend. And Madoka's mother slaps her, and it's visceral in, like, the visual and audio of it. And Madoka's mother starts breaking down in a similar way that Homura does, which why, like, it strengthens the theory that they're the same person. Yeah. You know, they sort of say the same thing of um, Madoka's mother saying, you need to, like, live, stop living so much for others and live for your, like, you need to take care of yourself. Like, it doesn't, like, you, like, you need to think about those around you. They matter too. Like, you, like, and what matters to them is you being alive. Like, don't throw your life away. Like, killing yourself in some natural disaster for, for, for something like this. Like, you need to take care of yourself. And it, I feel like you're not. Yeah, and because, Marcus again, says, "Hey, mom, I'm I'm Jesus. Bye." <laughs> yeah, and, and and it's like it, it sort of shows that like with after Sayaka's wedding, Marika's mother noticed that rift between said- her and Marika that being a magical girl is essentially created. Um, and it's yeah. like, because of that rift, Madoka's mother got incredibly worried because she's like, I'm like, yeah. I want my daughter to be safe. You said and after I feel Sayaka's like... wedding and it confused the fuck out. Sorry, I <laughs> funeral. meant funeral. For some reason in my, okay, I'll tell you real quick tangent. <laughs> when we were at Sayaka's funeral, for some reason in my mind, I wrote in my notes initially, uh, Madoka's at Sayaka's wedding, and then I like was like, wait, that's not a wedding, that's a funeral. Why did it say a wedding? <laughs> she and married that's been it. stuck in my she mind ever since. She married death, it's fine. She married death. No, this isn't She, ma- she married um, Kyoko. <laughs> she married Kyoko, who is death. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's this sort of like growing rift between the two and Madoka's mother is genuinely worried about Madoka so she's keeping an eye on her she's trying to figure out what's wrong with Madoka and then she eventually confronts Madoka about it and is like you like I'm worried about the path you're going down like you need to take care of yourself and I feel like at the moment you're not wanting to do that you're wanting to essentially like alluding to like the fact that Madoka is wanting to sacrifice herself for everyone and Madoka like Spooky said, basically goes, like, if I don't do this, everyone is doomed, Mum. Like, like, there is no point to me being safe if we all die. Like, it, like, I could protect, like, I could keep myself alive, but we'll all die as a result. Like, this is something I need to do. Like, the, the, everyone needs me to do this. And it's like, I'm okay with doing this. It's, it's her sort of telling her mother and trying to reassure her that, like, yes, like, it's dangerous, and it's... The world is this incredibly terrifying, yeah. dangerous place, but, like, I accept that, and I welcome it, because I need to, and the world needs me to. Yeah, it's and like... it's okay. Madoka is when nobody... When everybody else thinks the world is ugly and hopeless, Madoka is there to still have hope in the things yeah. that other people have She's given up still... on. Yeah, she still, at the end of the day, has faith in yeah. people. She has faith in yeah. humanity as a concept. Yeah. She has faith in in hope. Yeah. And that's why she's like, no one else can do this, Mum. Yeah. Like, I am the only one who can do this. And I'm okay with that. Let me go, please. Yeah. Like, and her mum, essentially, at the end, is just like, I, I don't know what to do, but I just have to let you yeah like she she acknowledges that like her daughter has grown to this point where it's like 
her she n- not that she no longer needs her mother, but she's at this point where her mother has to accept that Marika can and will make decisions about her life on her own. Yeah. And she's wanting to now. And Marika's mother handles it in a way that, like, again, in a lesser anime, they wouldn't have done this. Um, they would have had, like, a wacky scene of, like, no, you're coming with me, and, like, like over the top, like, strapping Marika to a chair with rope, and her mum's being like, you're not going out there, it's too dangerous, and, like, a wacky <laughs> scene of Kyubei coming in and biting the ropes and Marika escaping out the window. Like, that's what it would have been. But in this one, Marika's mother lets her go. And is, it, like... <laughs> it's really funny you like, said that. Uh, just a quick little sidestep. In um, Monogatari, there's literally a scene where Araragi's in trouble and his girlfriend literally <sighs> kidnaps him and straps him to a chair. But it's because Monogatari, like, makes fun of tropes. Yeah, I, <laughs> so it's yeah, like, I was about to say, <laughs> yeah. from what I've seen of that show, it makes sense yeah. in there. So it's just funny that you but, said like... that because I was like, yeah. <laughs> 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 yep, <laughs> it's literally making fun of that. <laughs> but anyway. I, I... Yeah, exactly. Um, so, cutting all the way back, after Homura has this sort of conversation with Marika's mother, um, Homura, we then cut to Homura talking to Kyubei, and uh, they're sort of uh, standing on top of a, a building together, and uh, Homura talks to him about the fact that... Uh, I have this thought, I have I have these, like, fragments of memories, and I don't know if they're real or not. And Kyubei's like, listen, I don't know if I can believe you that, like, the rules of the universe have changed or anything. Like, I can't see it, because I'm kind of part of the universe. Like, I can't tell if your memories are real, or a fairy tale, Homura, which <laughs> is kind of another nice little <laughs> nudge to, like, yeah. hey, like, a lot of, like, the connections and growth and character yeah. moments are connected to fairy tales also, in, a, in a very loose sense. Homura's stories based off of Faust. <laughs> yes, because she does make that deal with the devil. Wow. Um, also, Homodica's witch is named Gretchen. Oh, there oh. it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, Kyubei, like, it's kind of revealed that Kyubei is been reset with all of this as well and has no memories of it is is no isn't Kyubei is no longer the top dog in this universe Kyubei is no longer the top dog in this series with regards to knowledge and control like it's revealed that basically Madoka is now Madoka is the one who has had that control and and used it um and so like Kyubei is like listen I I don't know why like magical girls still like vanish essentially like your soul gems shatter after um after like you've sullied them over time uh, like i don't know anymore like we can't explain it um and then he's like but this witch thing you've said very interests me quite a lot like huh like thinking about it like if we had this this sort of concept from the start we would have taken a very different approach to this entire energy collection thing um which whoo yeah um <laughs> Weehoo, weehoo. Um, and we we get this sort of thing of witches are no longer born in this world, but the the sort of curses of man still yeah. exist. Yeah, wraiths the... are still there because despair is still very much a thing. But yes, instead of instead of hope turning into despair, despair is just its own thing now in the form of wraiths. Yes, so. hope no longer is corrupted yes. in the way that it yes. was before. Um, it's no longer this cycle of hope corrupt. Uh, being corrupted by despair, being defeated by hope, being corrupted by despair. Yeah, instead now it's hope is born and it's separate from the despair. Yes, they are now completely separate entities. Yeah. Um, But now now the dangers come not from witches, but from the depths of man itself, um, which take the form of these wraiths, uh, which um, Kyubei sort of notes to Homura, like, no matter how many times you defeat them, they just keep coming back. Like, hey... That's despair for you. Um, and we cut down to Homura jumping down to fight some of these raids. Um, and as she does, she sort of has in her mind sort of like, this is still the place that Madoka tried to protect. Like, I may not fully remember everything or fully remember Madoka, but I do know that this 
this yeah. is the place Hol- she tried to protect, Homura and I do remember that. Homura is basically like, I don't, like, honestly, Homura in that moment is basically like, I don't think that this world is really all that worth it. But because, she did. Because Madoka is gone. So, because Madoka yeah. is gone. But this is the world that Madoka loved, so therefore I will protect it for her. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. she's just fully, like, <laughs> it, again, another reinforcement yeah. of just, like, Homura's character development and how the two of them yeah. have such a deep relationship yeah. with one another that they better each other's lives in and such a way. Homura that Homura has a bow. Which yeah, is and cool. and like this is the, this is the 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 culmination of Madoka freeing Homura from that that ever lasting cycle of wanting to protect Madoka. Yeah, is that it, it's created this revelation in Homura's mind that overall, like she did her job. Yeah, she did protect Madoka, and now it's like Madoka is a part of her. And then you get that post credit scene. <laughs> And yes, we we have Homura now having a bow in the similar vein of Madoka, and uh, we cut straight to the outro, which the outro is completely white now. It no longer has that grief VHS flicker that previous episodes did, uh, the sort of despair filter that would be over things. Uh, It is now purely white um, to signify sort of that the corruption is over. There is no more corruption. There is now just separate entities of hope and despair. Um, and so now we cut to a post credit scene, which, if you've seen the Kingdom Hearts 2 secret ending, uh, it's basically the same thing. In fact, they um, took the film directly and just used it. <laughs> they did. No. I was very surprised when Terra showed up. Yeah. Um, uh, we, we see a desert setting, and we see, uh, gre- more of these sort of, uh, grief wraiths, despair wraiths, sort of towering over the desert um and we cut to see homura walking closer to them in order to fight and as she gets closer and goes to fight them the wings of power behind her grow and envelop the sort of surrounding imagery and it is the sort of imagery of a labyrinth uh the sort of visual uh sort of design of the, the sort of labyrinths that we've seen um and she yeah. flies in and bursts into this this s- sphere of l- bursting light uh, of the the sort of despair wraiths and fights and it ends. Yeah, and, it and cuts Madoka to... says before that happens, yes. she says, "Don't worry, I'm here with you," which Homura hears. So yes, Madoka yeah. and Homura have become one. In it, it's like that is such. Yeah. <laughs> if that's not a declaration of a of like a completely deep relation like romantic relationship like i so i'm sorry yeah. can i say <laughs> i don't think that madoka harbors romantic feelings i think it is homura that does well i i, I sort of say a, a yeah. romantic relationship not in a sense of like they both feel the same way but like yes homura very clearly does and madoka knows that and knows, I, like, the impact that she has had yeah. on Homura. I don't even know if Madoka fully grasps what Homura's feelings are, but I, ho- I, I I think Homura 100% romantic in love with Madoka, and I think Madoka yes. I, does not harbor romantic feelings. Uh, I, I think Madoka knows, to a degree, how Homura feels, but she doesn't understand yeah. it. So, like, she doesn't fully yeah. understand how it is for her. Uh, I want to talk um, about the intro super quick, just to kind of relay a point that I want to make. Uh, so I talked about the cat in the opening, right? And through the whole thing, we're like, oh, ha, ha, a cat. Uh, that's Madoka's very first wish in her first timeline to become a magical girl was to save that a cat. cat. It's to save, oh my God. yep, that cat was dying. But to me, Amazing. that reinforces themes that Madoka looks at all things equally. <laughs> it's really it, it also is a is, <laughs> huh? is is a callback to, to her saving Cube yeah. at the very beginning. Yeah, she does say yeah. Is... That's part of it too. Mm. Like why she wants to save Cube so much. Yes. 
the cat yeah. is the key to all of this. Yeah, Madoka very much so. Uh, the cat's name is Amy, by the way. That's really important. I guess it's actually, they tell you at some point somewhere. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Madoka saves a cat. That's her first wish. wish. And uh, just kind of reinforcing that, like, I think Madoka looks at everybody almost kind of equally and, like, knows what Homura yeah. has done for her. But, like, that's another reason why I don't think she harbors romantic feelings and i think it's kind of on purpose because of the role that she plays you know what i mean um yeah it's 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 yeah. like this this sort of um for homura it's this incredibly deep relationship she has with monica but monica doesn't yeah like like for the example of like every time she realized or thought about like what homura has sacrificed and done for her her instant response was like, "I'm so sorry yeah. you did yeah, that. Also, like, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry like, that I caused you to do that. Essentially, there's like memes that are like, I followed like got, you followed her till the end of the universe just to be friend zoned because Monica's like, you were my very <laughs> best friend. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, I want to. There's a lot I want to talk about, um, but yeah, I want to yeah. dive into one thing really quick. Because here's a question I always that I always see brought up or a complaint, quote unquote, and it's always, "Hey, but why, but why didn't Monica just wish the magic girls never existed?" <laughs> and let me tell you about why that's fucking stupid. <laughs> of course, magical girls are still gonna fight and lose their lives for the sake of uh, rates and stuff, or uh, like the sake of the world. Right, so the sake of the, Monica, yeah. Monica's wish makes one hundred percent sense. And saying like, "Well, she should have just wished that Cuba never came to Earth," or she should have just wished that there were never such they, thing as magical girls. They literally establish in the yeah, show that if that magical show. girls never existed, first off, uh, humanity wouldn't have developed as it has, and they would still be like living in fucking caves and shit. Second off. If magical girls never existed, um, the universe would fucking die because that's the whole point of what Cubey is doing. Because Cubey is not a fucking villain. Cubey is just an antagonist. Yeah. Cubey is trying to do something for the greater good of the universe, not because he's a shitty person. So there's two things. Third point, Madoka, and when she's talking to Sayaka about Kyosuke is literally like, yeah, it would have been a waste if you wouldn't have made your wish, because your wish was still beautiful and still deserved to happen. Mm. <laughs> so she wants to preserve everybody's wishes, because those wishes are still something that's so important to them that they're willing to give up their lives. <laughs> so it's yeah, like, it, it, yeah. yeah, Monica's wish makes Which, so yeah. much sense, and everybody's always like, well, that doesn't no, why, why are there so magical girls? Why do they still die? And it's like, the point of her wish wasn't so people wouldn't die anymore. Because people look at the rates and they're like, well, this is fucking stupid. There's basically just another thing now that are witches. And it's like, no, no. it's different. It's she it's... Her wish was salvation. I mean, Kyubei literally even calls it a prayer, not a wish in the last episode. Like, her wish was for salvation of magical girls. And to become hope itself. To take despair and turn it into hope. So I yeah, it's, love it's, it. It's, yeah, I think it's the it's, perfect it's wish. It's this entire. Th it is because it's like, in in it, all in all, it it conforms to the rules that we have been established and and the concept that has been established of the universe being a zero sum game. Yeah, everything has to like reset to zero. Like Madoka getting rid of like, Kyubei, etc., like, saying, like, oh, magical girls no longer need to exist, they no longer need to harvest this energy for, for Kyubei and, and his people. It's like, well, without that, then the universe will fall to entropy. Right. Like, basically, what Madoka has basically done is just advocated for a more ethical, like, Madoka is the best union boss you could ever have. <laughs> yeah. Because Madoka just fought for the rights of magical girls to, you know have better working conditions where their despair no longer like the despair that they feel no longer consumes and corrupts them yeah like they are still they part can... of this cycle because they're required to be because the universe needs them to be part of the cycle right. but it is no longer at a personal cost for them right so now that, they can make like, their wish yeah. and even though they're dying they're dying 
for good reason not to become something yeah. evil. And also, Whereas, Madoka yeah. preserving their wishes is super important, right? Like, if Madoka didn't do that, like, Mommy would be dead. Kyosuke would still be in the hospital. They would still be suffering in some way. But Madoka is like, no, yeah. I want to preserve these wishes. I want people to still be able to make these wishes. I just don't yeah, want the despair the- to come from them. The the wishes are like the ultimate shining hope yeah. that each magical girl clings to exactly. and holds dearly. It is it is their like their absolute center brick of hope. And like if that gets corrupted, as we've been shown in the show, as it has like the way things were in the old universe, as their wish got corrupted and and came to fruition, they got corrupted and turned into witches because they realized. Hope doesn't matter. Like, hope falls to despair eventually. Um, and it affects them. Whereas, like, if Madoka is constantly ensuring that their wishes stay true and stay hopeful, they never can be corrupted. Because it's something that is right. just a constant throughout the universe now. Like, Madoka's law is that hope is a constant, despair is a constant. They do not corrupt each other exactly exactly and that's what's like really important about the wish that so many i feel like a lot of people don't really get or a lot of people have complaints of that i i don't fully understand it's like no her wish totally made sense man man madoka i think is one of the best fucking protagonists in anime and everyone just chalks her up to She's bland until she makes plot twist wish it end. And I'm like, fuck you. Well, Madoka is literally carrying the burden of all burdens of all of her friends. It shows you in Homura's background story that in the past, Madoka has jumped the gun and become a magical girl. So it, yeah. she has to not be one for this to work. And like, Which is she, why it makes her so powerful. Yeah, and the series is literally her seeing all of the despair of people so that in the end she can become hope itself and people look at her and say she's bland all she does is cry and it's like fuck you fuck you and she deserves to cry that, <laughs> the reason why i agree with you about like monica being such a good protagonist is like i don't take back anything i said in the previous podcast episodes of me being like i feel like monica really isn't anything because i was my hopes of it, like, actually being purposeful were kind of correct. Yeah. Because it's, like, the point of Madoka not being the focus and us simply seeing things through her life and her simply just sort of existing in this world and sort of taking things on is the entire point of her character. Yeah. Like, in the beginning, without knowing the knowledge and the context of, like, what she becomes and what she does, y- yeah, it's like, oh, all she does is sort of stand around and cry about being weak. But it's like, when you get the sort of context of she turns that into, like, taking control of herself and of the universe itself, it it makes her incredibly powerful yeah, as a protagonist. Yeah, because it, it's so good. It, it recontextualizes everything in the series and makes you go... Like, it doesn't make you go, ha-ha, you were wrong, see, here's this cool plot twist we had where, like, actually she was secretly powerful all along just because, like, there was a prophecy that Madoka, like, someone with a red ribbon would come along and and defeat the ultimate evil. That's another thing, I'm so glad, like, because through the whole thing it's like, oh, Madoka's the chosen one, but there's, they, they explain everything that I would normally hate, like... That kind of shit I in hate general. Chosen one prophecies. So I think chosen, chosen. I think they can be done well, but it's hard to I pull don't. off. I I'm gonna say this: if you're a prospective writer, don't fucking do a chosen one narrative unless you're wanting to do a deconstruction of the chosen one narrative. Yeah. And even then, it has to be really fucking specific and good because people have tried to do deconstructions of the chosen one like, prophecy narrative, and it is boring. It is completely boring. Like, the idea of a chosen one has been constructed and deconstructed to death. Yeah. Don't do prophecies. They are lazy writing, and they are terrible. They they ruin your story, having a prophecy in it. Because it's like, it's a get out of writing a 
a a story that flows and interacts free card. Yeah. Like you can just say, oh, why is this happening? Well, because there's a prophecy. Why is this character so powerful? Well, because the prophecy yeah. said it. See, why I is think... this character like fighting this person? Well, because the prophecy. Yeah, said I it. think I I'm very much in the mindset that anything can be written well, but a prophecy character is like one of the hardest things to do well. But uh, it is incredibly hard yeah. to the point where I say, don't try. Yeah. 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 But yeah, so in Madoka, you know, they're like, oh, she's the most power. she'll be the most powerful magical girl, and then, like, you get why, and it's not a good reason. <laughs> and I think that's one well, of the, the things thing- I like about it a lot. Like, it's not a good reason at all why she'd be the most the, powerful the girl. The thing also is that, like, Kyube doesn't actually fully even know, like, yeah. just how powerful, like, throughout the entire thing, Kyube's like, oh, Madoka could be really powerful, like, she'll, she will be powerful, she'll probably be more powerful than you, Sayaka, like, probably even more powerful than Mami, but, Q- but Kyube doesn't have the context at that time of the actual, like, timelines, it's not until, like, nearly the 11th hour where Kyube goes, oh, I understand, like, yeah. like why I've been feeling like Madoka's going to be powerful, and I understand, like, I was wrong. She's not just going to be powerful; she's going to be the most powerful. Like in that scene where she, where where Kyube's talking to Homura, he's like, "Thank you, Homura. Yeah. Like, you you have created like the most powerful magical. Like, we couldn't have done this. Like, this is something we couldn't have manipulated. Like, you have done, like the." like the ultimate work for us to give us the the final ultimate yeah. power that we need like like it's it's that that knife in the gut for Homura realizing that like yeah every time she's gone back and reset everything and tried to save Madoka all she's been doing is leading her closer and closer and closer to this point yeah. where it's like and and it it like Kube saying thank you to Homura serves as like Again, Kyube as a corrupting force for despair, like l- sneaking into the magical girl's mind of like, hey, like thank you. I couldn't have done this without you. I like she will become the most powerful magical girl and then the most powerful yeah, destructive most powerful witch, witch that is. And like it's all thanks to you, Homura. Thank you. Yeah. And Homer is just like, no matter what I do, he's right. Yeah. This is what she will become. Like I'm it's just futile, making, me doing yeah, I'm this. just making her fate worse every time I go back. Yeah, can I Which also in turn say, like serves to her be like yeah. there is no point in going back anymore. Oh my god, that yeah, I love the scene where Homura is like giving up and like how quickly her soul gem is filling with despair. It's so good. But, uh, because she's been holding it back for so right, long. Right, right. She's been clinging on to a like basically a false hope, except for it wasn't a false hope because Madoka becomes hope. Hee <laughs> hee. But yeah. uh, can I also uh-huh. say, I love that, like, because Madoka is obviously, like, a-, a god. Like, she's the Jesus figure in the series. Uh, so Kyube obviously, like, represents science. And a lot of people, like, look at Madoka and they're like, with saying that faith is more important, blah, 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 you know? And it's like, no, that's, if you if you are looking from the viewpoint of Kyube as a villain, but Kyube is just an antagonist. There's a difference Kyubei's not doing bad shit, and and really the ending of the series, like, her wish, still including Kyubei's plan, is like, no, you, a little bit of everything. <laughs> and yeah. I like that a lot, too. Like, like, as someone who isn't at all religious, I love, okay, first off, I love religious symbolism in shows that can oh, abs- turn it dark that and turn it, properly. yeah, yeah, if you can give, give me religious symbolism, make it dark, make it gay, boom, perfect for you. <laughs> It, but, the, the reason yeah. why I really like it in this is because it, it it doesn't go fall into that trap of like you need faith more than you need exactly. science. Exactly, like, it's, it's anyone who makes that argument. I don't really agree with right. it because the point of it isn't like you need to have faith instead of science. Right. The point is that like you cannot like neither exists without the other. Like yes, like if you go purely logical, purely science, purely mathematical, you will. Like you will see the bigger picture in a lot of in a lot of ways, but you will lose individuality. You will lose the point of everything. You will yeah. lose the essence like of you life need itself. To have faith you may in be able something. to understand life. Mm-hmm. You may be able to understand life, but you won't like fully be able to grasp it. Yeah, and Whereas, that's the like, thing. Like go... Monica isn't telling people, "Hey, be religious." That's not it. Mm. It's hey, have hope in something. Have faith in something. 
it's yeah like, it, it's it's like you need to have like in order to, to progress throughout your life you need to believe in something yes it's not like you need to believe in a god right. it's saying you need to tether yourself to like you need to tether your emotions like don't like ignore them don't bury them don't try and hide them you need to own them you need to not just own them and accept them but incorporate them into you and your life like it is these intertwining of of sort of faith based uh doctrine of uh of sort of a blind faith in one's own ability to feel emotions paired with this sort of uh, continuation of life through science like life goes on the cycle of magical girls goes on but because it has that element of faith put in through Madoka and Madoka's rules with this new universe you have a more ethical a more considerate a more uh, kinder and less painful uh cycle that the magical girls have to go through like the cycle itself cannot be fully purified because again it is a situation where the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few and it, it it's cubase it, people have essentially boiled it down to like s- like a handful of people need to essentially sacrifice themselves to save trillions of lives mm-hmm. and purely scientifically they find the most efficient way to do that, and because they're harnessing the power of emotions, it is to manipulate the emotions of these girls and cause them considerable amounts of pain through it. Whereas, through the element of adding Madoka's uh, faith and belief that humanity is good and kind and hope is unwavering and will always be there and is completely uncorruptible, you have this like acceptance that the cycle exists and needs to exist but it's also saying just because the cycle exists doesn't mean that the people inside it need to suffer right like like they're told like i i think i could be remembering it wrong but i'm pretty sure cube even says like kind of is more upfront with the contract about like becoming a magical girl about like it, it probably probably doesn't say everything but is more upfront with like the fact that there is a cycle and Mm -hmm. the fact that like, Hey, you've been chosen to help save trillions of lives. Like it it comes at a cost, but you get a wish and it will be maintained through this hope of humanity. Are you talking about uh, post Madoka sacrifice? Post, post Madoka sacrifice. Yeah. So yeah. In the post Madoka sacrifice, people have a good relationship with Kyubei. I mean, even Homura is sitting there hanging out. Even, even Homura. yeah. Yeah. Like, because Kyubei has been balanced, like yeah. Kyubei's inability to understand emotion and the 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 true power emotions have over hope and despair, uh, it is counterweighted and counterbalanced by Madoka's complete faith in that. Exactly. That now it is an ethical system for them. It is a. It, it's still, if you look at it as like some people have to die for the many to live, it's like as that. It's like it's terrible but it's like well at least in this sense the people who are signing up to it they know what they're not being tricked into it they're not suffering as a result of it they are accepting it and are willing to do it because they have they are actual magical girls they are representations and symbols of hope they are symbols of madoka they are like essentially like madoka's warriors they are the 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 ones in humanity who shine the most with hope Mm -hmm. uh they are madoka's best representatives to be able to give the universe what it needs god and it's like yeah i fucking love it real good it's real good shit also uh, I just want to talk about a little bit of, like, like just things that happened throughout the series. Because it was really funny uh, for when Kyoko showed up and you were like, oh, I get it. She's eating because she's an asshole and stuff. And uh, it's funny to look back on that, like, knowing... Because I wanted to wait to talk about it because of religious yep, yep, symbolism yep. and stuff. But it's like, ha ha ha, gluttony. <laughs> 
Gluttony. And you yeah. can point... Ha <laughs> ha, gluttony. Yeah, you can point uh, at Sayaka different with envy. Uh, Sayaka... See, here's the thing, right? So people try to put one on each character, and I think that's kind of wrong because... It's, it's, it is yeah. kind of wrong, because, uh, like, the minute you do that, it's like, wait, hang on, that kind of fits multiple, right. and then it's like, eh, it doesn't... I it's, think, it's more of an abstract Yeah, concept. and I think the interesting thing is, I think Madoka's the only one that doesn't really have any, which is good. No, uh, she doesn't really have yeah. any. She more has... If anything, she has echoes of all of them, in that she doesn't fully have one, she has tiny little glimpses even if it's just like one line throughout the series of something that represents that or yeah but she's never taking on yeah it's like, never in like a characters bad brief. way like it's like it's like the it's no. like she is a pure slate which is good but yes, yeah like with it, mommy, it, it's it's, it's yeah. not a representation of her as a character it's more a representation of the fact that she is at at the baseline yeah. kind of a receptacle for all types of like despair and grief. Yeah, because it's like, like she like she's able to take on everything. Right. She's multifaceted. Right, because it's like mommy pride, like <laughs> m- pride. She's like I can beat this. Wi-. Oh, my head's gone. Um, with like Sayaka, you have wrath, uh, but Kyoko also shows wrath, right? Uh, but Saika, One might say that Homura shows it in some sense, yes, too. Yes, uh, but Saika, you have, like, a little bit of envy and, and also a little bit of pride. Uh, Homura definitely has envy. I mean, Homura, de- like, straight up says, like, I'm f- I'm fucking envious of Mommy, even though she's dead, because you're gonna remember her. Which, by the way, we could talk about that scene real quick. Uh, after Mommy dies and Madoka and Homura are walking together, and Madoka says, I'll remember her, and Homura's like, I'm envious of Mami Tomoe. And then Madoka says, I'll remember yeah. you too, I promise. I can never forget you. And Homura's like, if only that were true. And it's like, fuck, uh... man. <laughs> it's so good. And then, so good. And then you have uh, Kyosuke with Sloth. Yeah. Uh, um, a lot of people... Hitomi with Greed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean her, her hair's even green. Yeah, you can say ho- Homura. <laughs> as a joke, it's like, yeah, yeah, you can say Homura with lust. Uh, to, oh, abs- yeah, a- a- absolute a- yeah. in in the most like one of the most purest senses, like the purest sort of like uh, like uh, uh, tales of lust yeah. of like a person completely losing their life yeah. and sense of self to another person, like the purest definition of yeah. lust, like absolutely yeah there's like so much uh, there's so i don't understand how people can deny religious symbolism in this fucking show like kyoko even eats like fucking apples and shit it's like the symbolism is shoved down your throat kyoko's father was a priest (laughs) like there's just so much in it that's like oh my god and uh kind of a sidestep a little bit remember when uh hitomi got the witch's kiss and was like led into the cult Yes. Her dialogue when she's talking to Monica in that scene, she's like, um, when they're like gonna die, she's like, it'll be great. We're all going to leave this mortal realm and we're going to ascend into the heavens and leave our bodies behind. And then she says, soon you'll understand too, Monica. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. They are just, there is so, if you rewatch the series, there is so fucking much where you'll be like, oh my god. Oh my god! <laughs> like it's here. It, like even 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 just that as a, as an individual bit yeah. is like such a such a good reinforcement of like the the delusions of despair. Like it like that ties into like essentially Homura deluding herself into thinking that like through this loop she can she can save the day. Like she can she can save Madoka. Yeah. She can save everything. She can stop it all. When the point is that like. Homura was blinded by, like, Hitomi in that moment was blinded by despair in, a, in, in, in like, a false hope, sort of, a corrupted hope. Yeah. Whereas uh, Homura was corrupted in, was blinded by, like, the visions of Madoka's hope. Like, she thought she was, like, blinded by hope, when in reality what it was was she was letting go of her own hope and emptying it and keeping herself empty because she was so attached to Madoka's hope and seeing Madoka as a symbol of hope that by the end, when she finally started to let go of that, 
despair filled instantly. Yeah, and I love the in the gap that remains. Homura's concern is being with Madoka. A, a big part of it is right. Like she wants Madoka to be safe, but in the timeline where they're both about to become witches, Homura's like, okay, maybe this isn't so bad. Let's become witches together. Let's destroy everything together. Let's be together and like. Like, destroy this this disgusting, mm. awful, horrible world. And Madoka is like... Madoka still has faith in the yeah, world. Yeah, Madoka's like, hey, I lied, you know, make sure I don't do this, whatever. And then she's like, you know, I, there's still hope in the world. And it's like, oh my god. Like, she, like, Madoka is such a good character. This series is so, such a good example of just, like, writing a character and having them stick to being that character. Like, the characters don't I... sway, you know? No. Well, they, they sway in the ways that they're meant they're, to. but They they're, develop. They're, they sway in ways yeah. that make sense. Yeah. That it's it's actual development. Yeah, they, it's they not develop. like, they oh, don't they're just doing this because the plot right. needs them to Exactly, now. exactly. Like, it, it's not the kind of thing where they, they, they had, like, the beginning and the end, and they were like, how the fuck do we get from point A to point B? Like, no, this was very carefully, like... The re- like how they got at point A and how they got at point B and what it means to be at those points and how to get in between those two and how like what happens in between the two points and how that affects and is affected by everything else like that it is so well thought out I would go out on a limb and say it's probably my favourite example of a this character is now Jesus type yeah same story same. because it, it's like every like Every other type of, like, Jesus, like, overt Jesus imagery I've seen in, in, in media uh, has been so unimaginative and completely un... Like, has no understanding about what they're doing when they do it and, like, what it actually means. Like, I, I just think back to, like, fucking, like, Man of Steel or whatever <laughs> when, like, Superman flies out of a spaceship, like... T posing essentially like he's Jesus on the cross, and it's like, oh, for fuck's sake, yeah, you guys, like, and I think Zack Snyder, can... you don't know what you're doing with this Christian right. imagery. You can put, and I mean, Monica puts an imagery, and it's just like more subtle, like when when it shows the um, like. Madoka, all the threads of fate being tied to Madoka. She's literally in, yes, like, a, she, yeah, like a crucifix pose. Being crucified yes. by the threads of Th- destiny. Yes. <laughs> of the threads of her fate that Homura has tied her into. Yes. And then the sort of flip side when you, when Kyubei essentially is like, hey, you've, like, you're tied up yourself. Yeah. Like, if, like, like, Kyubei talking to Madoka and being like, hey, all it takes is as soon as, like, Homura lets go of this hope, like, boom, all the thre- all the threads will snap her, and she will be consumed. And we see Homura being on in the same position of being this sort of, uh, essentially a sacrificial lamb. Yeah. Um, and oh, it's that's like, so good. yeah, like that's like that sort of thing is like, oh, that's great yeah. because it has meaning and it makes exactly, sense in the story exactly. and like theming. But, like, having Superman just T-pose, it's like, <laughs> yeah. you're just saying he's Jesus, and you don't, like, have a reason yeah. to say it. Like, other than he's a savior, it's like... Right, right. Yeah, exactly. There's no other reason. Whereas uh, Monica, the whole, literally from episode one, the build-up was to this. Uh, I also, I meant to clarify this earlier, I just want to do it while I'm thinking of it really, really quick while I was talking about Monica's wish and stuff. Uh, because people get confused by this. Uh, Mommy and Kyoko are alive again in the universe afterwards because they died by witches and because witches no, uh, like don't exist anymore. Like they're taken care of before they're born. They're they're alive yeah. again. So just to just a quick clarification there because a lot of people get confused as to who the fuck's alive and who the fuck isn't. Sayaka isn't because she, it, her death was becoming a witch. So hence why Madoka took yeah. her soul. Mommy and Kyoko are alive again because they died by a witch which no longer exists. So, quick clarification. Sayaka is still dead because she woke up and chose violence. Yes, Sayaka mm-hmm. is still dead. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it's like <laughs> canon that Sayaka dies like pretty like every single timeline. Yeah, yeah, every single timeline and like all of them. Sayaka always dies and it's always like kind of a similar way. <laughs> so, that's like a constant. That- Oh, that that makes the line of Homura talking to Sayaka cut even deeper, of her saying like, 
I don't care oh, about yeah. you. Oh, yeah, I don't give a matter. damn how like, you die. Not... <laughs> I don't give a damn you, if you die. You, like... <laughs> You, I don't care if you die. Like it, like Homer's so used to Sayaka dying. It's like it's not only like a I don't care if you die. But it's like you're meant to. Yeah. Like this yeah. is your fate. Like you're not part of this story. You're not part of like Homer is so enraptured by Madoka. She doesn't see how everyone else fits in because she's so like trying to figure out how everyone is like fits into the final place in relation to Madoka, and Sayaka isn't one of those, so it's like Sayaka's completely irrelevant. Yeah, and I mean... Like, she always ignores her. Yeah. Every time. Yeah, and Homura and Sayaka, like, never really get on. I'm sure Homura, to some degree, is, is jealous of Sayaka, too. And it's like, she just doesn't give a fuck. Oh, absolutely. She's like, I only care about Madoka, and quite frankly, I just don't like what you're doing because it fucks up Madoka shit, and I don't like that. It sucks, like, so... Mm. Bye. And it's like, yeah, that happens every timeline, and every timeline, Homura's like, okay, bye, bye, Sayaka. Like, <laughs> it's 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 almost like 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 in that moment, Homura's not just talking about like Sayaka in that moment, mm -hmm. but like Sayaka as a concept yeah. in Madoka's life. Yeah, like, and she's basically like chastising Sayaka for like every time I go back, you cause Madoka yeah. so much grief. Like, you don't deserve to be so close to her, essentially. Yeah, and, like, yeah, and it's just, like, Homura, Homura literally doesn't fucking care about anyone but Madoka, but it's okay, she's not gay. <laughs> not gay, no. Homura has dedicated not, not over 12 years of her life saving Madoka, but it's okay, she's not gay. Also, Kyoko and Sayaka, like, aren't gay either, it's fine. And it's like, what the no, fuck are we talking about? they're not, totally not. Yeah, like, and you can see, it shows you in the few timelines that we do see, every time Sayaka dies, Kyoko gets upset. Every single one of them. <laughs> She's like, yeah, damn it, Sayaka, why, why did you that, have to go and do that? <laughs> like, That's why I really like Kyoko and Sayaka together, because they're both examples of victims of... The, the 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 suffering of this cycle and the exist not just the the suffering of the cycle in the way that it's so unethical and 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 emotionally like painful that Kubei enforces on them with the whole turning into witches but just the the existence of the cycle as well they are inevitable like Saika especially is just an inevitable like dead yeah person yeah when it comes to because she's just always part of that cycle she is always destined to die. And, like, the way Kyoko sees Sayaka going down that path and becoming the same victim of the suffering that she has become and connecting with her through it and wanting to save her in, in, in like, in a different way that, than Homura wants to save Madoka, but with the same sort of, like, devotion to it, almost. Because she's, like... In, in the end, like, Homura gives in to despair because she realizes she cannot live up to save Madoka's hope, whereas Kyoko doesn't give up to, like, save Sayaka's hope. She accepts her own despair to join Sayaka, yes. and that in itself is hope. Yeah. Like, like, Sayaka and Kyoko are, like, stewing in despair the entire time, and Kyoko essentially being, like, Listen, I can't hold on to this hope thing because you're no longer holding on to it. Right. So I'm going to hold on to despair with yeah, you. Yeah, it's like... And it's, it's like <laughs> this counterbalance yeah. between the two, like, essentially, well, not couples, but, like, the two pairings. Yeah, it's like, it's like yeah, Hom Homura is the gayest, uh, <laughs> and then Kyoko uh, and then Sayak. <laughs> it's fine. Um... Uh, a fun little fact that I actually mentioned to Deer not long ago uh, that I heard them bring up while we were watching. Um, uh, completely accidental, the, the girls die in order of their boob size. Oh, yeah, I forgot you said <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, so Mommy dies first uh, <laughs> because she has the biggest titties, and then Sayaka, and then Kyoko, and then Madoka, and then Homura has the flattest <laughs> And that's just so fucking good. <laughs> completely accidental. I, completely accidental. It's I I completely think that that's hilarious it is so and also funny. like that's so <laughs> dumb. I love it. Yeah, it's <sighs> like the character designer like didn't know what the show was while designing the character, so it was like literally one hundred percent accidental. There was no like he he he. 
it just happened. <laughs> it's really fucking good. But yeah, I told I told yeah, Deer that, it's... and they were like, "What? Why?" <laughs> I. I, I'm I'm glad you like I'm glad you brought it up the way you did during the commentary. <laughs> yeah, because it's like at the end when it's like this this the, the I think the, it was the final episode or episode I think it was the final episode yeah. where they have like the the final art end screen and all five of them are sitting together and like you like they're facing the screen and then Deer just goes oh yeah I forgot by the way they die in order of titty size yep. And then just goes, that see, there's mommy and her fat titties. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. it was fucking hilarious. It's like, just like, oh my god. god. I love Monica. It just brings me endless fucking joy. Um, there is so much that, like, on a rewatch, you're like, wow, wow, wow. This is wow. absolutely a narrative that is so interwoven. Every bit of dialogue, every yeah. frame, everything has a purpose, and everything has multiple purposes and comes back and plays into itself. It is a, it is, simply put, objectively a a beautiful story, a beautifully written uh, story of um. So much care and attention put into it. Yeah. Uh, who who was your favorite character by the end, Gam? Uh, see, this is the thing. <laughs> okay. This is the thing. I don't know if I actually have a favorite. Because it's like, I really like Mommy because she's like, you're, you're acting cool. The sassy with the teacup. Like... She's elegant, but is ruthless. Then you have, like, Homura, who's this cold, but, like, getting close to her, you realise, like, she's not actually cold. She's incredibly just focused and determined and holding on to this one person in her life um, and is always dedicated to fighting for that person. Um... Then you have Madoka, who is Jesus. Yeah. Um, and then you have Kyoko, who is this... <sighs> I know this is... Like, I, I sort of think about it as, like, who... Like, I I really do like them all. Yeah. Like, probably the only one that I'm like... There's a little bit of distance between them and the rest. Like, a tiny bit, but I still really like them. Is Sayaka. Okay. Um, Because it's like... I, I do like her, but it's like, I don't really connect or relate or really care much for the arc and growth that she goes through, because it's like, it's, like, you oh, see I, it, and Sayaka's it's more like she's like an favorite. example yeah. of see, what I, See, I through. like negative development, though, a lot in stories. It's always, like, those will, like, almost always stand out as, like, my favorite arcs in a story. It is. It is really good, yeah. and I really do like the way they handle Sayaka. That's why I still really yeah. like her. Oh, yeah, like, no, I, I like think every about character. all the others. I've said before, with Madoka, it's like a thing where I'm like, regardless of who the fuck you say, I'm going to be like, okay, yeah, that makes sense to be your favorite character. Like, people people are always if, like, even if someone says Kyuubei, and I'm like, yes. The only time I would ever, like, yell at you is if you're like, Kyosuke is my favorite Kyosuke. character. Yeah. It's like, no, fuck you. No, he's not. You're making that up. <laughs> he's not a character. Yeah. He's a plot element. Yeah. Um, my, but if if you yeah. had if you put a gun to my head and said like okay, okay you like them all pretty much the same but like what is the absolute like what one comes up on top I would actually probably say Kyoko really purely <laughs> because of like what happens to her and like the growth that she goes through in that final fight wow like I'm not really like much a fan of like her design or like her initial character but like. The growth that she goes through with Sayaka, I, I, wow, really just like appreciate and love the way that they handle. I'm gonna it. be real. Like, I th- thought you like, were gonna say Homura. <laughs> I well, here's the thing. I really like Homura yeah. for the way that that is. But my my thing is, it, her growth and development intertwines her so much with Madoka that it's like you can't really just have like, Homura as a favorite, I feel. Because it's like, if you like Homura, then it's like, Madoka has to basically oh, be your second she's... favorite, almost, in a way. <laughs> Homura is uh, Caleb's favorite, and Madoka's, like, his least favorite. 
<laughs> well, but, it's alright. You likes know what, Caleb can have a pass on yeah. this. But, um... Because he forced you yeah. to listen to Avril Lavigne's Fuck Hello you. Kitty the other night. Yeah, but, um... <laughs> most, most people's favorite is Homura. That's the fan favorite, which makes sense. I, it makes sense. I do really like A lot Homura. of people say it, episode 10's the best episode in anime history, and I'm like, I like episode 8 more, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, yeah. I'm just like... Homura makes sense to be the fan favorite because it's almost I... it's almost her story, right? Like, yes, it's Madoka's story, well, but it's yeah. like equally Homura's story. You just don't realize it. Well, that's yeah. that's the point. The final three episodes completely recontextualize yes, the entire series yes. to make you realize this isn't Madoka's story. This is Homura's yes. story, and then it's like the result of it being Homura's story is that Madoka yeah. takes over. And is like, no, this was meant to be my story. Like, I like I see what you've done to make it yours and shoulder it yourself, but like it's yes. Madoka Magica. Yeah. Like, I'm this is me. Yeah. Um, um I I don't know if I'd actually agree and say it's like the best episode in all of anime, purely because I'm a pedant and would be like, well, if you singled this out as the best ep it doesn't actually make it the best anime episode right. by itself, because the reason it's so good is the context of the rest of the right, series. Right. So it's like, I don't feel like you can like pull a random episode out of this and be like, see, watch this, it's so good, like, th like this specific scene. It's like, you need to have the context of the entire, like, it it's such an interwoven narrative that taking one part out of it makes it basically kind of incomprehensible in a way. Because it's like, it, it, it's still enjoyable, but you don't get the full intent and enjoy that you're meant to get out of it. Like, it, it misses key context yeah. points. It's fucking amazing, especially in the way it, like, ties into the facts of, like I said, like, Homura taking over the story and realizing it's Homura all along, and then Madoka being like, no, it's my story. Like, 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 you're not meant to do this. I am. Right. Um... Yeah, it's... no, uh, yeah, no, I get yeah. that. But yeah, um, uh, fan favorites, Homura. My order is Mami number one, Kyoko number two, oh. Sayaka number three, Homura number four, Madoka number five, which is, See... and that's directly after reading, like, I think Madoka's one of the greatest anime pro tags ever. Yeah. But I love well, all of it, the characters it's, it's a It's the lot. case They're where it's like, close. you love them all. Yeah. It's like, it's like not choosing like between like worst to best. It's like choosing like Order. Yeah. the best to best. Yes. And it's like just marginally which one yes. you like a little bit better. Even if it's just like, I like the design of this character more. Yeah. Like for me, I'd probably say from best, like most to like least liked, even though still really yeah, like more. Yeah. I would probably say like Kyoko, Mami. Hell yeah. And then Homura and... Sayaka and then Madoka. Oh really? Okay. That yeah. I Yeah. I love I love it... Madoka. I think Madoka is absolutely fan. I mean, I like I said, I love all of them, right? Um But mm. I think part of the reason why Madoka is like low on so many people's lists is because she doesn't really have the struggles of the other girls that make you attach to them more. That's the thing. Like the reason Madoka is such a good character is because of the other characters. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's why sh I'm. I'm actually curious. What is your ranking, dear? Like, uh, Kyoko, Sayaka, Mommy, uh, Hamura, Madoka. Okay. Oh. Okay. Actually, I really thought Hamura would have been a bit higher for you. I actually really like Sayaka just because. That I went through that shit a lot in my teenage mm. years with Max, so I understand. Yeah, that. Yeah, I, I really fucking love Sayaka because of that descent into, like, basically pain, um, pain and depression. Yeah, pain, depression, accepting it, yeah, and sort of having it just take over your life, and eventually just sort of being like. I no longer exist. I am just this despair now. I mean, um, in my case, it almost killed me, so, you know. I mean, in Sayaka's it did too. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it, it, that's that's why I really like Sayaka and Kyoko. Yeah, they're it's really this, good. Like, I, I like the relationship more than Madoka and I mean, Maybe not their relationship, but, like, I ship them harder. Like, I'm way more invested in, like, their relationship personally. 
I even, even if I think, I think that's the way I would phrase yeah. it. I'm more invested yeah. in like yeah. Sayaka and and uh, Kyoko yeah. because it's like they, it, it's v- it's clear that like Sayaka essentially needs like needs someone there. Like Sayaka is completely falling, free falling, and like Madoka tries to be there, but Madoka is so such a symbol of hope herself that Sayaka can't stand yeah. it. Like, she, like when Madoka's like, can I join you tonight? Sayaka starts crying because she just doesn't understand yeah. why Madoka is, like, so full of hope and so, like, willing to be... Like, Madoka must be, like, ignorant of something to, like, uh, like be like this. Whereas, like, Kyoko is, like, down the exact same path yeah. that Sayaka is down... But she has survived yeah, it. Yeah, Kyoko's and like, hey, is you like, dumbass, here's what you need to do, you know? And Exactly, and, she, and, and Kyoko is like, you are suffering, and it is, like, this eternal pain that you will struggle with, and it feels so lonely, and other people don't understand, and, like, you see people like Madoka and, like, Mami and that, these shining, elegant, held-together hopeful people and it does it, it almost repulses yeah. you and repels you because it, you're not that and you see yourself as not that and Kyoko essentially just going I'm not that yeah. Sayaka and- <laughs> I want to be there with right. you like like we're, like not like we're both going to kill ourselves sort of sense but like I was down there once and you're falling down there I want to be down there with you because if you're not alone you can survive yeah. and like and i almost think, I, it's what i need yeah and it's like and so i like i'll be there yeah. for you it's really sad at the end uh of the series too like kyoko has to go on living without sayaka now and homura has to go on living yeah. without madoka now like both of the things that in the past have um stopped them from continuing. At least mommy has a teacup. Yeah, mommy has a teacup. Uh, it's all good. Mommy gets to be the leader. That's her, like, role, right? She's, like... I mean, she... Yeah. Her name is mommy. <laughs> She's, like, the mother to them all, you know? Um, yeah. But... But, yeah. Yeah, I... That... I think that's why I'm so in- invested more in, yeah. in Koko oh, yeah, and Sayaka. Because, yeah. like, with, with Madoka and Homura, it's, like, this, this element of, like, their sort of emotional arc is kind of completed and we're more dealing with the aftermath right, of it now. Right. It's like Homura like remembering like Madoka in some fashion and coming to terms with what's happened and sort of trying to figure out like where she goes from there and Madoka being essentially incapable of like uh, fully understanding or, or reciprocating anything that Homura is sending towards her because she's just like she interprets it all as like this deep sort of hu- human connection. Yeah. It She's was a, like, yeah. like this, like e- yes, of course, like like it was a like, sacrifice. I, of course, and, I love yeah. you. I love everyone. Exactly, that sort exactly. of like I I like, gave up my soul for a cat. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Which the cat in the intro. Yep, cat in which, the intro. But yeah, it's like <laughs> Madoka so essentially does the polar opposite of what Kyubei does, whereas Kyubei's like, I see the big picture, I don't really care about the small individuals. Madoka does kind of the exact same thing on the opposite end. She's like, I don't have the individual anymore. I don't have this sort of, like, I can't understand the struggles, like, that that specific sort of emotional struggle and, and joining that Homura is wanting with me because I see and have grasped this larger picture of this new universe yeah. and all this despair that I'm holding. Like, it's sort of like the, inc- like, representing the fact that, like, faith and science, like, they are completely different on the opposite ends of a spectrum. Yeah. But, like, the sort of uh, struggles and sort of understanding that they go through are incredibly yeah. similar. And I love, um, like, with Cube uh, versus Madoka, is it's like... Kyube is, I see the bigger picture, I don't care about the individual, whereas Madoka is like, I see the bigger picture, I still care about the individual, which yeah. is a, just yeah. a really and, nice little and touch. it ends up yeah. like, yeah, and Kyube's like, well, that's going to consume you. Yeah. Um, it's like, that's impossible, you can't do that. 
and, and Madoka is essentially like, well, yeah, Fuck sure, you. watch me, and yeah. then does it, and it, it consumes Madoka yeah. in a, in like, but it's in a sense of like, Madoka's like, no, like, oh no, now I'm God, what? But I can't be a human. Like, Madoka knows it. Yeah, Madoka knows Madoka's completely what okay she with is it doing 100%. Yeah. 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 It's good shit. It's a beautiful yeah. story. I. <sighs> Hmm. Uh-huh. Hmm. Yeah. Do I actually feel like what I'm about to say? That's the question. Is he about to call it his favorite anime? I don't know if I actually am or not. That's the thing. Because, like... If I think about, well, okay, what is actually my favorite anime right now? I'm like, I don't really have one. It's like, I really like Cowboy Bebop, and I liked Isaac, and even though I still haven't gone back and watched all of it. It's like... But, like, I could very easily see myself, like, <laughs> sitting down and rewatching Madoka <laughs> constantly and just yelling about it with Spooky <laughs> with a bottle of wine. I'm like, I, I, I think Madoka actually is my favorite anime now. Yes. <laughs> like, it's just... It's... It, it, it kind of... It kind of proves it kind of proves what I always kind of knew but I, I I never wanted to try and explore the fact that like anime can be really good <laughs> and like it can be this sort of ascendant piece of media like I always knew that they were the anime like that but I never believed that it would be as good as this Hell yeah that's um, what I like to hear <laughs> <laughs> so basically m you'll never want to allow me into your house now spooky because i will steal your figurines no i would um, literally die <laughs> <laughs> what is it your soul gem or something um yes <laughs> but yeah i i probably i i yeah i don't know if it's just like the fact that we've just spent like nearly the last two hours talking about it Listen, uh, if you're... Or the fact that we spent an entire month talking if about it, like but, like... If you're like me, you're only gonna think of it for the rest of your life. It's fine. <laughs> it, it, I, I can say this for certain. It is not gonna go away from my mind. Hell like, it will yeah. pop up during, like, like, thinking... It'll be used in my... Like, filed away in my mind as, like, something to compare and contrast me I can't wait for of, all like, the podcast episodes to come where you go... <sighs> why can't this, this be Monica? Yeah. Like, I miss Monica. Why do we have to watch this piece of right. shit? So, uh, score? Is that a 10 or? Uh, well, I think it's. Yeah. I think it's kind of obvious yeah. if I'm saying it's my Listen, favorite. Listen, I know people say who say it's something's their favorite and still give it a 9. Okay. <laughs> and those people. Uh, out there, okay, if, okay, if like, I'm gonna go yeah. like fair and balanced if i like okay what could be a criticism of it that i would have um other than like personal things like the the i feel like in a few areas they they um they said some things that they didn't really need to like the mother yeah. when talking to homura saying like i would have bought this for like if a daughter if i had like personally like like, I both understand why that's in there and believe it should be in there, but also, if this is just for me, like, if right. someone was making this entire series just for me, I'd be like, don't put that right. in, please. Um, you don't need that. Uh, like, little things like that throughout the series, like, I don't really have any sort of fundamental flaws, like, I'm not sort of thinking, like, oh, why didn't, like, right. she wish for Cubay to not exist, that sort of thing. Right. Like, no, everything that normally I would have been like, well, but what about this had been thought of and accounted for yeah. by the writers and runners. I love of it. you again, um, <laughs> wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I, no I, I'm I, glad. I wholeheartedly. I am very, yeah. very, very glad that you ended up enjoying the series. But we still have one more week left in Madoka May. <laughs> mm. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so, uh... Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm curious and excited. Yeah. So... Yeah, so I give it a two. <laughs> um, dear, are you thinking a three or four? Yeah, I'm still about where I was last time. I haven't really changed much. I give it a negative three. 
<laughs> you hate it so much you think it's funny. Yeah, it's hilarious. Um, I think the rating is awful and I would never consume this again. <laughs> I definitely Can I don't just say like a, a, a shelf of merchandise of it directly behind me. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna take like a really quick second just to say an extra fuck you to Icky Tozen. Uh-huh. Um <laughs> like this is good and it's like thinking back it's like oh man Icky Tozen was a real piece of <laughs> shit. Like a just a real piece of shit. I'm glad yeah. that this is like your final takeaway from the ending of my like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yeah, my final takeaway from Madoka, Icky Tozen is a piece of shit. Um, it's like, like, God, everything else I can find, like, redeeming things in and be like, you know what, this is, this has really good elements. Like, Angel Beats, I can find things that I'm like, okay, no, I actually really like this. And, like, even another, I can think of things where I'm like, uh, there's still elements of, re- like, redeem it for me. Like, I'm not gonna throw it all completely out. It's like, there's still worth to this. But Icky Tozen... A, a polar opposite to this. Like, there is nothing in Ikitozen that's good. It is all terrible. It is all, like, okay, Madoka Magica is an example of, like, anime that I look at and I'm like, I want all anime to, like, be like this if it wants to be good. Like, there's obviously, like, stuff out there, like, you know, your popcorn stuff where it's like, it's just there for enjoyment. Like, your slice of life stuff, that sort of stuff. Like, that isn't trying to be a grand story or anything. It's like, yeah, that stuff still exists and I'm okay with that. Like, I'm not gonna make it my favorite, but it's like, it can be okay. But, like, Icky Tozen is the polar opposite (laughs) of Madoka. There is nothing redeemable. It is everything I hate in anime put in a single anime. It's like, watching this just (laughs) highlights it even further for me. So, fuck Iki Tozen, um, and Kyoko Best Girl. Yay! (laughs) See you next time for the third movie, everybody. Bye! Contract?